we're at my dad's warehouse um, where we keep a lot of our things that we just don't want to get rid of but we don't really use a whole lot so people ask me all the time do you still have the Ghostbuster car um, the answer is yes uh, I haven't driven it in about a decade but it's here when I saw the first teaser for Afterlife it was like uh, that looks like my car this might be the only Ecto-1 ambulance replica that's just sitting in this condition right now so I thought you guys might get a kick out of seeing where it is and what it looks like right now so let's go do it So here it is. So we bought this thing 18 years ago. I think it was August 2003. And the intention was to build a car for a movie we were making. I ain't afraid of no guns. I was in high school, I was 16. I had a relative that said that the, an old funeral home was selling some of their hearses because they were buying new ones. And um, I wasn't really familiar with hearses so i was thinking well the 90s hearses still have the back door like the ghostbuster car does like the side doors and the back like the four doors so i got on ebay just to look a hearse up so i typed in hearse and the first thing that popped up was this car and i was like man that'd make a really cool ghostbuster car too bad that's wait it's in georgia it was like 45 minutes from my house so i told my dad about it and um the guy's cell phone number was on the eBay listing. So we called him and he's like, yeah, you can come look at the car, um, check it out. If you make me an offer on it, I can take it off eBay. So we went and looked at it and yeah, it was it was in really good shape. It was sitting in a pasture with grass and weeds growing up around it. It was originally green and white. It was pretty amazing. It only had 60,000 original miles on it. And the interior was in really good shape. It was a medical transport ambulance in the 60s and 70s. The base is a 1965 Miller Meteor ambulance. Uh, and this is the first year the headlights were vertical instead of horizontal. So that's something that I've been, that's been bothering me for 18 years, but I can't complain. You know, we had so much fun with this car. Watching that Afterlife trailer, I'm really motivated to get this baby out. So we built this for a movie. The car ended up way better than we thought it would, so we decided to just kind of wait on the movie until we had all the equipment and everything else to go with it. This car was finished, finished um, by Christmas of 2004, because we had it in a Christmas parade. That's how we kind of unveiled it to everybody. But it wasn't until 2010 where we actually got around to making the movie. I would graduated from college and it was like now or never. I went to the University of Georgia. We used their film lab to edit and do all the special effects because they had Final Cut and After Effects on their computers already. So when I was in college, we took this car out everywhere, um, all the time. But when we made the movie, we took it out, I can't, at least 40 times. Anytime we had a scene with the proton packs, even if we didn't need the car, we took the car just because that's how you could carry four proton packs without them getting messed up. It's got the proton pack rack in it like the real car does. Anytime you stop anywhere, it gets swamped by a million people that want to take pictures. Is that the real car from the movie? Yeah, it's, yeah, it is, sure. And sometimes we'd film for 10 hours and then I just want to get the car home and put it up because I got kind of jaded with it and annoyed by people. And I mean, it's my fault because like when you got a car like this, you're asking for attention. But some days you just want to get it home and put it back up and people would follow me home or follow me here just so they could take a picture of it or ask me questions about it. And it was, it got kind of, you could kind of see what it's like to be a celebrity a little bit, where sometimes you just want to go do something without people bothering you. But I got sick of this thing. So by the time we finished the movie, the last time I had driven this car was the premiere of the movie in March, 2011. Um, I came over here with some friends a month or two later, just to, cause they wanted to go cruise around in it. I was going to go take them for like a, 10 minute ride and we're gonna get something to eat or something. And uh, 
started the car and a fuel pump was busted on it. Somehow, the fuel pump waited until we were done with the movie to give out. That was really the last time I tried to start it. I didn't need it anymore. I moved to Los Angeles a couple of months after that. So the car just kind of got put in here and it sat and then it sat and then it sat. It makes me feel bad that we just kind of let it sit here. It's got $800 Coker white wall tires on it, but they're, they're from 2003. So I'm sure they're dry rotted. So one thing you guys all know that my channel is called unfinished. I'll give you guys a little tour of this car real quick. We never actually finished it. There's some things that are missing. When we built this, there weren't a ton of reference photos and a lot of people didn't know everything that's on the, the Ghostbuster car like they do today. So this is back 2003. There weren't that many Ghostbuster car replicas out there. So some of the things on it are inaccurate, like the oxygen tanks are the wrong, like these are just tanks that I found. I thought that they looked right, but they're not the World War II oxygen tanks like that were actually on the car. Honestly, you know, it's a 65 Cadillac, but we tried to make it as accurate as we could. We've got the right light bars on it. And I've been doing some reading on the light bars and apparently um, these say code 3XLs. So these are, I, these are code 3XL 5000s, but the, the light bars on the car in the movie, and I've said this in another video before, were Force 4 XL. And apparently what the difference between those are, the domes are interchangeable. So they're like basically the same thing, just with a different sticker. Um, but the Force 4 bars, had four rotators with, with diamond mirrors in the middle of each rotator. So it's like rotator, diamond, rotator, and then on the other side, rotator, diamond, rotator. The code three bars apparently had four rotators on one unit or four lights on each rotator is a code three bar. So if you look at my bars, they have rotator, diamond, rotator. So these might be force four bars with code three domes. I don't know. We paid a hundred dollars a piece for them 18 years ago and now they're worth a fortune a blue dome went on sold on ebay six months ago for like 600 600 700 dollars so yeah this isn't the right siren it looks right we, a friend found this siren in an antique shop for like 10 bucks and we had a dinky one on it before that and he brought this and i sandblasted it and painted it silver and it looks good enough we found a propeller a which is the little red beacon light um on eBay and I think 2006, we paid $500 for the propeller ray on eBay. So there's no telling what one of those things would cost now, but we have the right propeller ray and I'm probably gonna steal it for my afterlife car when we get that going, which is gonna take a while. Sorry for those of you guys who've been waiting on an update, but yeah. Uh, but one thing I never put on this car was the, the Whelan strobe beacon that goes in the middle of the propeller and the siren. I just could never find a strobe light that looked right and they just were so expensive and hard to find. But I just bought one on eBay, so I will be putting one of those on here soon. Also, um, I, I didn't know this car had hood and back door louver plates on it. So I'm gonna put some louvers on the hood and the back door soon. When we made the movie, I wanted the car to have strobe lights in the grill, so I just bought some little crappy strobe lights on eBay, like on like work trucks. Um, so they're way wrong. I'm gonna try to buy some Tomar micro strobes and uh, I'm gonna deck the grill out with those cause they'll look good enough. Also the blue hoses on the side are just like gutter hoses that, on, that you have on the side of a house. I'm thinking about swapping those out for that, so for the right types of blue hoses um, and I never put a Unity spotlight on this thing. I think my dad was afraid that we'd mess the fender up if we tried to drill a big hole in it for the spotlight. But I wanna put a spotlight on this thing because they're not that expensive and they're really easy to come across. I think I might even have an extra one for this thing. The roof rack is is steel and it's got the wrong, like it's an inch and a half instead of an inch. So it's kind of a, it looks a little fatter than it's supposed to be. But you know, looks good enough. We tinted the windows on this thing. And that was, I remember being in the back of this car for days. Uh, the window tinting was probably the worst part of building this car, um, but it looks good. And I like having the front windows tinted cause you can't see uh, who's driving. It's kind of, it's your like, it's like a limo. The windshield and vent window glass obviously is different than a 64 back Cadillac. We do, do have the, the proton pack rack in the back of this thing. It's, it's not built on the right 
stretcher, but it is really helpful to carry the proton packs around. The proton packs, the suits, the, all the equipment, everything's all still in this car. So if anything ever happened to me, uh, my daughter would be like the McKenna Grace character in Afterlife because all this stuff's here for her just to discover and it already kind of looks like it. Lots of people have been like, why don't you just sell it? But it's, I'm too sentimental and I have too many fond memories of this car. Uh, I'm not gonna ever take it apart. I don't think I'm ever gonna sell it. Um, it's just the way it is. I'll have it forever, you know, and then my kids will have to figure out what they're gonna do with it after I'm gone. So by then I might have five or 10 Ghostbuster cars. So <laughs> I don't know. The coolest thing about this car, I know that the, um, I know the year model's off and it looks way different, but my favorite part of this car was the interior. Now the interior was in pretty decent shape for a 50 year old car when we got it. But the cool thing is like in the movie, the Ectos have black and white interior, but in the cartoon, it's green and white. So that was cool considering our movie was based on the cartoon series. So we kind of had a matching interior from the cartoon Ecto. I'm telling you right now, it's my goal to get this thing going before that movie comes out. Cause I have a two year old daughter and she is some, for some reason obsessed with Ghostbusters. She's never seen this car. I don't think she has any idea that I have it. I want to, I want to take her to see the Ghostbusters movie in this car. That's my goal. So stick with me and you'll, you can see if I get that done or not. Uh, we just have a little bit of work to do on this thing and then we can, we'll have it out again on the road. So subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you later.